All right, and now we are officially on the record. The official ceremonial muting and recording has begun. Um, so welcome everyone again. Um, we have a special guest today with Mark Sermon who will be um, speaking for the majority of this call. Um, and just at the top of the call, as always, to call out at first a few blog posts. Um, welcome you to take a look starting on line 82 down to 92. Lots of very good stuff in there, including a nice post by Zainab, one of the mouse um, squad members in the Huffington Post about don't be a user, be a maker, which is a pretty awesome piece and lots of other good stuff in there. Um, but with no further ado, it sounds like enough people have dialed on. I invite you to click on the link that's on line 21, this call info link. That takes you to a screen share um, where Mark Sermon, our fearless leader, will be presenting our WebMaker Beard Gear review. So I'll just pause for a moment to let you all get on there and hand it over to Mark. Cool. So Mark, if you're, if you're wanting to talk, I think you'll still have to do the star seven to unmute. There you go. There you How's go. that? Better. Uh, so I, was, I was just saying that I, I don't think of myself as particularly fearless. I have many, I have many fears. Um, oh. But uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take us through, um, as I have done at some point in the past, the slides from our recent board meeting. And while I, I don't like to have meetings or these calls where anybody, especially me, talks for the whole call, um, it is, we're halfway through the year, uh, and this is the year where we kind of first decided to embark on the WebMaker program. Uh, and so the board asked us to do a review of where we're at. Um, and given that this call is filled with all of the people who have gotten us to where we're at and who are going to take us further, um, I thought it would be worthwhile to share that review and also just like some of the questions um, that, that have come up for I think a lot of us, um, including for the board. So my plan is just to take us through, uh, take us through this, this slide deck. If I were to just hammer through it, it would definitely take less than an hour. Um, but what I want to do is stop at certain sections uh, and allow questions. And if you want to unmute and ask questions, that's great. Uh, or if you want to just be chatting in the Etherpad or in IRC, um, Michelle is also going to uh, moderate questions and, and jump in at the various different sections where I stop. So that is the plan. Uh, and now, truly without further ado, uh, so here is the July 2012 uh, Mozilla Foundation board slides. And these are pretty close to other some than a few administrative items, um, you know, exactly what we shared with the board. And most of this, as I said, is the mid-year review uh, for, the WebMaker, uh, for the WebMaker program. Um, and it, I'm just trying to watch the slides shift. So there you see the mid-year review slide. Uh, and that is one of our awesome learning gems that we did with Coder Dojo in London. And so you know, just to kick it off, when we decided in December that uh, building a generation of webmakers should be one of the three big priorities that Mozilla has, uh, alongside Firefox and the web being a, a leading platform in mobile. Um, you know, we set out specifically to do one thing in, in 2012, and that was to take the best things, the best software and best learning resources that we developed over the last two years with Drumbeat, things like the X-ray goggles, things like Popcorn, um, things like the Hacktivity Kit, and roll them into a single cohesive WebMaker offering. And so that's what the, the board signed up for. Um, that's what we all agreed to do. And it's certainly a, something I think we've made tremendous progress on. If you look at where we were you know, seven months ago, January 2012, um, we just kind of had a shingle out there that said, drumbeat is over, we're moving. Or we're kind of rolling this stuff up. Um, and if you think about where we were six months in, a month ago, um, we launched what is a you know, pretty impressive story and set of offerings for the world uh, on the Mozilla WebMaker site. And there's our beautiful, uh, designed mostly by Chris Appleton website that looks incredibly gorgeous. Uh, so congratulations and thanks to Chris. But if you go to the next slide, you know, we didn't just have a website. We actually had an exciting set of tools that all summer long people have started to, to play with. And you know, we have popcorn people in the room, we have symbol people in the room, we have all kinds of folks on the, on the phone who 
got us to the point where we've got three tools that even if they're still minimal and basic in some ways, uh, people have reacted well to, and more importantly, I think, shows what we mean by web making um, and by how learning and making can, can be fused together. So in six months, that's a pretty big achievement. Um, the other thing we do, we did, which we all knew about on this call, but I don't think the board even fully understood, and certainly the world is just uh, starting to get to, is that A, if you look at this project gallery that we shipped a month ago, um, we're starting with the idea that you come and play with something and remix it, which I think is really different from everybody else in the market uh, who's trying to, to teach code. And even though we're still at the basics of what we're teaching, the way we're teaching I think is far above and beyond how, how anybody other than maybe Scratch, which also lets you fork projects, uh, is at. And the other thing is we, you know, we really built this as a, as a big tent. It's not just about our stuff. Um, and I think that'll be critical and also differentiates us going forward. We have Tumblr, we have Code Academy, we have all kinds of other people uh, in our gallery of, uh, of things that you can come and do on WebMaker. And I think maybe not most impressive of all, but I certainly uh, because the, the tools and the content are incredibly impressive, but very impressive is we all on this call made this map. Uh, you know, last, I guess it's just over a month ago, we launched the Summer Code Party um, and we've got over 600 events uh, in about 80 countries, or I think over 80 countries where people have set up and said we're going to learn a little bit about how to code and how to make things on the web this summer. So when you think about that, no, do I go back? No. When I think about that uh, in relationship to where we were in January, there's a huge amount of progress in a very short amount of time. And I think the, the board was excited to see that. I think we all have something to be proud of. Uh, and so you know, we can say we've shipped this minimum viable product uh, of a WebMaker offering. I think we start to know what a WebMaker offering looks like when we look at through the, this lens. Um, and where we are now is we need to test and iterate on that minimal piece that we got out the door. In particular, iterate on pieces of the software, rolling in what we've learned, iterate on how learning happens, and especially really build up the, the community of people who are involved here. So I think I'm going to stop there to see if there are any early questions, Michelle, although I think that the Meteor stuff is still to come. Michelle? Um, no, there haven't been any questions yet, but I encourage, like you said, to, for folks to use the Etherpad as a place to drop in any questions um, as we go. Cool. So the next piece I'll go through fairly quickly because I think everybody here on the call probably none of it is news, but you know, the board and the rest of the world uh, don't follow the details day to day. So the, the question I want to answer here is what do we actually do? Like what's the work that went on to ship that thing? Um, and so um, we set ourselves, and, and I can actually, or somebody could actually throw it in the, in the ether pad, we actually set a set of goals in terms of how we were going to get to that vision for this year. Um, and they're there on wiki.mozilla.org slash something 2012 plan. Uh, I think slash webmaker slash 2012 plan. Uh, and here are those five uh, goals. And you know, where we went is from a pretty vague set of goals. I and mean, if you go back and look at those, I mean, everybody will recognize pieces of work that you're all working on. But you know, it's pretty high level to get from that to oper operationalizing. And so we went from those goals to having a team that has a common focus uh, and is then moving in pretty much the same direction. And that is an exciting thing and a big achievement. Uh, we went from Hagasaurus to, or the X-ray goggles to having symbol. And so when we started in January, like we had no idea, we had a promise. You go and you look in the goals to like do the next thing beyond the X-ray goggles. We had no idea what that was going to be. Uh, Jeff and Atul and Michelle Levesque and, and Dan Tinker started to move down a path with story thing. We scoped that back and we got to the point where we have something you know, solid and good and that people like uh, with symbols. So that's a pretty big piece of work that happened in a short amount of time. We pivoted Popcorn, which I think was a lot of things to a lot of people, into something that has got, I think, a fairly good and narrow focus on, I, I keep calling it the, you know, the iMovie for APIs now. I don't know if that's exactly the right phrase, but I think it's starting to narrow in on something that will be very different in the market and will open up a kind of creativity that nobody else has, has opened up yet. 
Um, and we move from the idea that our software and our learning is separate to this kind of idea of apps that teach. And so whether that's the stuff that Jess and Chloe and others are able to put into Thimble, where you start with those projects, or what Kate has built with Laura uh, inside of Popcorn, all of the, our apps come with stuff that you can just start making and learning this right away, um, which as I said earlier, I think is a real differentiator for us. And then we've started to use these programs that we have not just as, I think, how we talked about them last year uh, when we started this, as a kind of front end to show off what we're doing, um, but as a kind of lab and contributor pipeline. So whether it's Hive, which really is bringing in some of our best instructors and best event organizers and best uh, you know, feedbackers and contributors to, to some of the stuff we're doing at WebMaker, or Open News, which is bringing in a lot of kind of ninja level contributors, people like um, Mark Boaz or Cole, who are fellows, but also others coming in that way, or StoryCamp, which I think is bringing in a, a totally different kind of creators, although somewhat similar to Hive, those are people are shaping what we're doing. Uh, and that's a really exciting thing to see and is, is very much the point of how we're trying to work. And then, uh, you know, the last piece to just call and give a shout out to, um, which I think really blew the board away, uh, was we went from a napkin sketch of a summer code party in March, uh, and we knew we needed to do something big, uh, to actually having something big. Um, and as, you know, some of the people here on our team reach out to talk to some of you on this call and others who have organized these events, um, it's just really exciting to see there's a lot of people beyond just the usual suspects who we work with who want to work on web making. Uh, and now what we have to do is get good at, uh, at doing that, working with people on that. Uh, and I think this is the, the last piece in terms of what we did in achievements is, and, but I'll dig into this in more depth in the next uh, set of slides, is we moved from a pretty tiny group of people who had expressed interest in some of this, who were kind of left over from Drumbeat, to really at least a thousand people we can count who are somehow pitching in on, on Mozilla WebMaker. Um, and you people, to, you know, those of you who are on the call and, and then others who might find some other way to listen to the recording of this, I mean, that's really the, the core thing that um, I see as both an achievement and I think that we're grateful for uh, is the community and the people who want to contribute and, and grow around this. It really is exciting. So that's, that's the end of that section. Um, where I want to go into a bunch of depth because it takes us into the forward-looking piece is what did success look like for WebMaker in 2012? Where have we made progress on some of the metrics that we set out, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second? Um, and what do we need to do to get further on them? But Michelle, is there anybody who's got questions at this stage before I go into the metrics and, and success piece? Um, yeah, so there uh, were two questions coming in. So um, Emma raised a good point when um, you mentioned the goals um, on the wiki that specifically call out teens. Um, uh -huh. And she's asking what our thinking means for younger capable kids. Um, and Jess is kind of diving in on it more. And like I think just the, maybe some clarification on, on who our target audiences are, what are the age groups, um, are there different things we're doing for those different kinds of age groups is one question. Yep. So I mean that, that it's a nice question to get as you have this particular slide up uh, and the same photo of London because you can see people who aren't teens uh, in the picture. They're, they're quite a bit younger. And so I, you know, I think that we're really interested in I mean, in general, we're interested in, in raising the li web literacy of, of everybody. Um, I was talking to a bunch of folks at Media Lab um, the other day about, you know, they want to start an initiative to um, teach 7 billion people to code. Um, and, it, and in some ways that is our, our audience, but it's not a very helpful audience in terms of like, what are we actually focused on right now? Um, and so, I, you know, the, the way that um, I think about it, which scales it down a little bit, uh, is that you know, there's 1.2 billion people using social media and some big percentage of those people make something on the web every day even if they just make a tweet or make a, put a photo on Flickr or update their Facebook status. They're used to creating content and expressing themselves. Um, and I think that's the starting point of, of who our audience is um, in the long run for WebMaker is that we can take anybody who creates something on the web and help them understand more about what, they, what the web is capable of. Um, that's when we win. But in the short term, I think it is, you know, we've, we've got a fairly strong focus on young people, and I think it's anybody who's capable to engage with this stuff um, 
you know, we want to have jump in. Um, so whether they're eight or 18 or 28, um, and I think we're, we're bouncing around in terms of what the content is that's going to appeal to those different groups. But I think we're not, um, we're not pushing to build stuff that's kind of at a lower level than where we've already kind of started. And so it's much more about, as maybe Emma was suggesting, capability than about building stuff that's dramatically simpler than what we've built right now. Um, and I think most of that audience stuff will also flush itself out in like the type of starter projects that we start to put in there. Um, and that'll, that'll tend to, to skew towards different ages or spread things across different ages. And then, you know, I think that the other place to look at audience is we really started with novices. Um, and, uh, and that's going to remain a focus for this year. But there's also a thread of work, which especially is in open news and in parts of the popcorn universe, that's more focused on the ninjas. So people are trying to do high-end productions, high-end pieces of software. And I think that aspect of web making is also really critical to, to what we're doing. It's just something we haven't fully fleshed out yet. But you'll see in the third of the Webmaker videos that come out, starting to build that narrative about working with that higher end of Webmaker, how they fit into the picture, not just as instructors, but also as inventors and, and creators alongside of us. Um, so part of the audience right now is novices, which tends to then skew towards kids. Um, but the audience over time will, will broaden to also include really expert people and how they fit into the picture. So I'm going to keep going, uh, and I think there will be more questions as we go through this, uh, this chunk. And so I'll stop at various points in this. And I can't see the clock on my thing. Okay, I see it on Mary's. All right. So, uh, you know, at the top level, what we said our goal was to move tens of millions of people from using the web to making the web. And it was exciting to see that Huffington Post um, blog post that you mentioned, Michelle, and just sort of that people are talking about that message. I think it still remains the goal. Um, but that's a pretty huge and fuzzy thing, smaller than 7 billion, but still, you know, not what we're going to hit in 2012. Um, so what is it that we're measuring as our success in 2012? And at our April board meeting, and I'm pretty sure I presented those slides as well, I, I can't totally recall, um, we agreed that our primary metric for 2012 should be contributors at some level. And so that's what I want to spend a little bit of uh, depth on. Uh, we also said we look at adoption, badges, media, and like media coverage and revenue, but that's, those are all secondary things that we're looking for in this startup year. So in terms of uh, what contributor metrics we're looking for, um, you know, the first thing to do is why. Why do we pick contributors as this metric? And the, the main reason is we see people, people like the, those of you on this call, uh, and all the people who started those summer code parties, and all the people who are contributing stuff to Thimble and, and Popcorn as our key resource for building things and people uh, and reaching people. Um, there's no way that the small team of people working on this at Mozilla can possibly achieve the vision that we have on our own. And so that's certainly the tradition of Mozilla. Uh, when we started making Firefox, there was 10 people employed and a whole huge number more uh, who were able to build you know, the initial Firefox that actually has made a difference in, in, the, web, in the world and on the web. Um, I think we're, we're hoping that same model can work again uh, with this ambitious set of goals around WebMaker. So it means we need to build that in early and measure for it. Um, and the other thing about, that's good about having a community of people who we're in conversation with is it's an early way to evaluate whether people understand and like what we're doing. And certainly people on this call, as well as a lot of people who have done summer code parties, have been a great source of feedback, um, as well as direct contribution in terms of code and projects and teaching. So there's three kind of contributors that, that we agreed to look at in our metrics. Uh, people who are contributing code, people who are contributing content like uh, popcorn projects or symbol projects, and people who are actually out organizing events or teaching. Um, and we looked at different targets based on where we were in, in April, one quarter into to WebMaker. Um, and they're, they're outlined on this slide, but it's easier to actually, I think, look at them in this um, next slide, which is to look at uh, where we were with all of them was about between a half and a quarter of where we wanted to be in our targets. So we had some early involvement of, of people in April already starting to build steam. Um, 
But you can see that that really starts to change uh, by the time we get to the summer code party. Um, there's significant numbers of people uh, and significant progress on every level except for the content piece, which is fine and understandable, um, towards those goals. So you know, we're building the kind of momentum that I talked about in the beginning about, um, and that I'm, I'm both proud and excited about. Um, and here's another breakdown of kind of where those numbers come from in the different projects. And so um, a lot of co-contributors around popcorn, and we can debate whether all of those are real, real. I mean, Brett and I went back and forth, but he looked at people who have taken the code out of Git and put something back, or people who are working on the popcorn JS library in some kind of way. It, you know, whether that number is exactly right, um, I think doesn't matter. What it is it shows is that that's our most mature software project of all the web maker software projects, and there are people using the JavaScript library, and there's an interest out there in the code side of it, which I think is a thing we want to get to uh, with everything else. And of course, it, 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 webmaker.org has got the most uh, in terms of teaching in that that is basically all the people who organize summer code parties, um, and so that was the thing that brought in a lot of people who we can both learn from and work with on teaching, but Hive is also a really critical piece uh, of building out that teaching. And there is a, a group of people emerging more on the ninja level of teaching around open news. Um, so that's huge progress. But the, you know, as I've said in a couple of blog postings, and I, you heard it from Michelle Levesque and some of her blog postings as well, uh, and other people have, are certainly talking about it, um, we haven't yet got systematic about how we work it, with and support contributors. And if that's our main energy source, uh, and our main thing we're measuring against, we have a need to do that. And so that'll be I mean, one of the big focuses in the next six months is how do we get systematic about working with contributors. And uh, John O'Bacon, who is the uh, community manager, or head community manager for Ubuntu, has literally written the book on this topic, or has written a good book on, on open source contribution. And he talks about if you want to get systematic, that there's four things you've got to do. Uh, build on ramps, have clear call to, call to action, uh, have the documentation on like what to do or how to do it. So if I show up, I want to help, it's clear how to do it, and then celebrate people's success. Um, and so I think you know we had some element of all of those, even though we weren't using that, um, with the summer code party, uh, in that you know we said, what's the call to action? Organize the hearing me? Sorry. Uh, you know, what's the call to action? Organize a summer code party, even if it's just three people. Uh, and there was a really good event kit, like go to the website, here's where you click through to see how to do your three pages. Uh, and then, you know, we had the documentation. Um, actually, sorry, that was the document. So we had a call to action, we had the on-ramp that was the website, we had the documentation, and then we've been in the process, so that we probably could do better, of feeding back and celebrating those people. So I think you know, what we want to be looking at is how do we use that same kind of formula for everything, for contributing a symbol project, how do I actually get in and say I want to make a symbol project or a, or a popcorn template, you know, where's the instructions on how to do it and who to feed it to and what the review queue is and all those kind of things. Um, and so you know, we did it well with that and we now need to uh, you know, dive deeper on the people who, who showed up and, and it worked well with the Summer Code Party, dive deeper with those instructors. Um, there's two things going on right now with that in mind. One is uh, everybody on the staff is doing one-on-one -on -one outreach to people who organize summer code parties. Uh, and we're also working with Remo, which is the Represent Mozilla group, to kind of systematize a special interest group for people who want to be webmaker instructors or who want to be involved in um, going out there and doing webmaker stuff. So that instructor piece, I think, worked because we had a simple formula. Uh, and super kudos to, to Michelle Thorne and, and Ben Simon and others who made that work. Um, and now where we want to go is we want to dig deeper with that. But we also need to look at the, the code side and the content side. And so I think you know, with Popcorn, we can see where that has started to work. Uh, and now it's a matter of, uh, as we get into Popcorn Maker, um, finding ways for people to plug in and also finding ways to take some of the open news projects, which is another place we're seeing code, uh, and plug people in there. Um, I think there's a question with Thimble, which is, 
Uh, it's not as mature as those other projects. Is it ready to take code contributors yet, or is that something more to push into next year, like to actually sh show more of what we mean by Thimble, develop it to the next level, and then bring people in? Because I think in some ways we had a tension early on with Popcorn that we might have too early been trying to get people engaged as code contributors. So those are some things to be thinking about working on in the next uh, six months. And then in terms of like the on-ramping and how it works, Learning content is the least developed area. So other than the Hackfest in London, we didn't really, for Thimble, um, have a way, or even for the DIY projects, that people could just show up and like work on contributing learning content. Um, and Jess uh, and a bunch of others are going to be working on how that um, is something we can systematize and put out an offer and an invite for uh, over the course of the next three, four months. Um, so that's a least developed area and a place to push. And so one of the symbol priorities is to work on, as I just said, that contributor workflow piece um, over the next two quarters. Um, with the idea that it'll probably be very simple, using wikis and using events in the short term, and we'll have a kind of full featured system later in the year or next year that's a bit more automated. Um, and then the last thing I want to say on contributors, and then I'll stop for questions here because this is the longest section we have on, on metrics, um, is over the long term, I think we want to really build our contributor muscle across the whole organization. And that means building in clearer call to action so people know how they can plug into what we're doing. I don't think we're, we're yet systematically good at that. We need to build the kind of proverbial architecture of participation. We need to like basically have things like this call, like the webmaker list, like our IRC channels, but more sophisticated where people can actually talk to each other and see each other. Um, and that's something I think we're, we're still not as far as we need to be on. And then I think by the time we get, uh, you know, as we look at staffing for next year, we're going to want to have some de dedicated contributor engagement staff who are on point for helping all of us be good at this. Um, and that's something we've been talking about. So I think that, that's the end of the contributor metrics section, which I, I do see as the one biggest thing we're going to look at by the time we get to the end of the year to see if we've made progress on. Michelle, are there questions or do people want to unmute and ask questions on that topic? Um, well, I'll just uh, there is one question that either had um, about uh, how the x-ray goggles fit into these plans. Um, TBD, uh, or to, to be determined, uh, it's something we haven't had that much discussion about. Um, I think we want to go back and resolve some of the issues that we had to deal with in terms of making um, publishing possible again. I think there's a lot of discussion about how the X-ray goggles as an interface uh, approach can fit into popcorn and uh, Thimble over time. Um, but I, I have to admit it's a place that requires some further discussion. Um, and probably is a good topic for uh, a tool, Jess, and others to lead a discussion on on this call at some point in the, the foreseeable future. Um, and then I think there another question, not directly about contributing, but um, a bit earlier around audience. Um, Carla was also asking to, to dig a little bit deeper about what you mean by to teach code. Um, sure. Um, I, I just I, I say sure like that because it, it could be a long conversation. I, I think that the the answer that we've got at this stage, or the kind of maybe it's not the answer, the scope of what we're looking at this at this stage is a mix of people understanding how the web works, and so you know sort of the web mechanics, everything from like how a URL works and copy paste and all you know uh, how an API works. So there's both advanced and and simple versions of web mechanics, uh, and then through to how do you create something on the web, which starts from presentation of, of text and structure of text and the visual presentation of things with, with CSS, through to how do you actually like make, make a computer do a thing through the web, which is programming. And so I, you know, I think it's that maybe four boxes, uh, you know, one, one axis being the breadth of web mechanics to, to kind of creation of things on the web, uh, and the other being from kind of simple to advanced. So I don't know if that, that answers it, but uh, you know, I think that's the scope of where we're focused right now. 
Um, there's some typing going on. Um, there's also a question on uh, an update from the Remo SIG. Oh, I. To yeah, weigh in on it. <laughs> what, yeah, why don't you do that? Um, so the right now the proposal for the special interest group with the Remo program was proposed at the mentor council meeting that they had in Berlin about a few weeks ago, and it was um, heavily supported and. One of the next steps is actually to use the next um, Moz Camp, which will be in September, where a lot of uh, Remo will attend that are involved in webmaker initiatives, and you like together start some of the initial pieces for what would this SIG look like, um, what are some processes that we can lend from existing special interest groups, um, and there's also a thread on the Remo list if people um, are interested in following that. Um, so there's a question in there, what are the plans in terms of creating a way for people to self-organize? Um, and again, it's probably a good conversation to have on this call because I think people are much smarter than me uh, on that topic. But I, I would say the current priority is getting as many people on the WebMaker mailing list and people using that channel as, as possible. And so if you're in other channels and you know, it feels like people are in an echo chamber, um, you know, pushing them into that mailing list helps because it is still the one email remains the one universal connector of people on the internet. Um, of course, it has uh, you know has lots of disadvantages as well. But you can contribute or participate in that email list as a Google group, as a using just regular email on Mailman, or using um, for those people who are as old as me, uh, NNTP news groups. Um, and so there's lots of ways to access that. Um, and I, I think. You know, we should really be um, using that more as a channel outside of this call to, to have discussions, float ideas, um, debate, uh, share a plan, celebrate things. Um, in terms of like a centralized kind of um, place on the web, over time webmaker.org will become that community and, and user accounts and, and so on are in the foreseeable future, um, but not necessarily in the next few months. And so I think you'll start to see the actual stuff people creating be a, a, a place that uh, folks can gather around over the, over the coming year. That said, you know, my pretty strong opinion, and I, I think Mozilla's bias, is to try to spread out to where the people are across the web. And having a distributed approach and making that work is, is also really important. So I'm going to move on um, from that question into the other kind of four smaller pieces of metrics that, that we're looking at and shape what we're doing over the, the rest of the year. And so adoption is, uh, is the next one. Um, and I guess you know, the self-evident, but we're saying why do you look at usage and adoption is um, you know, we want to build consumer-grade software and experiences. And consumer-grade not meaning that people are consumers. We, we want them to be makers but in the sense that people like what we're doing and want to use it and want to use it to make things. And so uh, to do that, we need a way of knowing who is using it, how many of them are using it, how they're using it. Um, you know, we've built a really good software team around uh, this set of tools and built some kind of basic products. Um, but we still need to, to test and iterate, and that means we, you know, we need feedback. And so the you know, the challenge we've got is we don't have history of usage or adoption. We can't kind of say, oh, you know, people have dropped off and using Thimble and have started using popcorn, or, you know, this is so popular because a million people are using Thimble and only 500,000 people are using popcorn, or these are the segments of people who are using these things. We're, you know, we're barely at the beginning of even being able to baseline that stuff, much less uh, look at trends. Um, you know, the kind of stuff we can look at is the number of Thimble uh, pages published in the first three weeks, which was impressive at 12,000, but still doesn't tell us much. It, it's, it's without any context. And the only place we can start to see these trends and the, the kind of information we're going to want to have and we're going to have more granularly just is in uh, email list growth and the kind of people who are following uh, what we're doing. And this is the email list that, that Ben Simon and others uh, run and use for our general communication. Uh, and so you've seen significant growth of that over the last uh, year, mostly due to SOPA, 
Um, but even as we switched our messaging to WebMaker, um, that's not necessarily the reason for it, the list has continued to grow. And so people are at least interested in following this message uh, of what we're doing. And so there's some very coarse uh, positive feedback about the overall initiative there. People have not in droves run away from the mailing list saying, why the hell is Mozilla doing this? Um, you know, there's some sense of, of resonance there. Um, and so that's the kind of early trend we can see and some early affirmation. But, you know, what we need to do is get to that, um, you know, get to the same kind of information and get to it at a much more granular level around people who, how people are actually using the website and the tools. And so that'll be Building the infrastructure and baselining that will be another priority for the next six months. In the meantime, how we're working on this stuff is through testing and surveys uh, as a way to get product feedback. And so uh, we built a survey into Thimble, um, which we've got 150 people to, um, you know, to fill in and respond to. Um, Gunner is sneaking in with a little piece of paper. Um, and we're also just out there, including on this call, talking to people, uh, talking to people about what they like. And so here's Ryan who w went and talked to, uh, to people at TED Global about popcorn. And feedback through just being out there in the world is really critical uh, in terms of being able to shape where we're taking the software, where we're taking the WebMaker initiative overall. Um, and so you know, that's, that's what we've had as a proxy. What we need to start to do is build out the tooling and instrumentation, you know, which will manifest as dashboards for Thimble and Popcorn, um, that we can start to build up that baseline information and, and monitor trends. Neither of those things uh, made the MVP feature cut, in particular because we didn't have a publishing gallery for either. So I think once we get a publishing gallery for both, we can then start also to build in instrumentation saying, oh, this is what the stuff is that people are publishing, and here's the amount that they're changing things, and so on. Um, and in the meantime, while we build that infrastructure, we are focusing our features, as I talked earlier, uh, based on what we got as feedback from the initial releases through surveys, through user testing, and so on, and we'll continue to do that. So that's, that's the kind of feedback on adoption and our proxy for adoption through surveys and testing in the meantime. Um, I'm not going to stop there, uh, Michelle, unless you stop me, because I want to just go through the other ones which are, are brief. Um, so badges is something that in the long term we've said we really want to have as a metric because they're key to understanding or they can help us understand and measure whether learning is happening. And that doesn't come through just looking at, at adoption and it certainly doesn't just come through measuring contributors. Um, and ultimately we want to see whether people's uh, web skills and creativity increase. That's why we're, we're here, why we're doing WebMaker. Um, and in particular, you know, the things that we want to measure to begin with are, it, it kind of goes to what Carla asked about code, basic web mechanics and, and kind of creativity skills or very basic coding skills. And Michelle Levesque had started to build out this grid of what we want to teach uh, that Doug Belshaw now is taking to the next level. And a major priority for everything in the next five months is going to be rolling out some of these basic badges, building them into webmaker.org, building them into the software products, uh, and finding a way to start to get feedback about whether people are learning, or even just test our thesis about uh, you know, this approach to learning and whether badges help. Um, and of course, the, you know, the, but the current challenge we're in is we don't have badges or really much at all to tell us whether people are learning. Um, we delayed the implementation of even the most basic of badges because those developers who were working on badges were needed on Thimble. Um, and so, you know, we really need to make Q3 and Q4 uh, critical for or kind of the major focus being integrating badges into webmaker.org, Thimble, and uh, possibly Popcorn, although that may be next year. Um, and so, in the meantime, what we've been doing is using that survey uh, of Thimble users to ask about learning at a very, very coarse and basic level. Um, we're also talking to instructors uh, as we go and do these one-on-ones uh, and tracking some early entry exit stats uh, on the learning projects. And you know, the early observations from that survey are people with no experience said they learned something. Uh, it doesn't mean they said they learned a lot. If you kind of uh, break it down, 43% said they learned a lot. Some was just kind of interesting and they learned a tiny bit but not much. 
But you know, that's not a bad piece of initial feedback uh, from those 150 people who filled in that survey. Um, I think it doesn't tell us much other than keep going, there's some promise here. Um, but I think that's okay. Um, it doesn't say we're on totally the wrong track. Uh, and so next steps on that are we're going to fix and test some of the basic learning obstacles that we found in uh, Thimble through the feedback processes. Um, and obviously, you know, we're going to focus on building out badges as a major component of what we do across the WebMaker offering, um, which a bunch of people are in another room talking about as we speak. Um, and so the, the last two are media metrics and revenue. Uh, and so just to quickly go through media metrics, you know, Matt, Rebecca, everybody on the communications team, and I guess you know everybody overall did a great job of getting the message out. Uh, and why we care about getting the message out as a metric is it tests whether our idea is kind of getting through. Um, and it also kind of gives some proxy on, on reach. Um, and the good news on the message is we got positive coverage and reasonably wide coverage of, of WebMaker. Uh, so you see a life hacker quote, and Mozilla WebMaker aims to teach you to code and change you from web consumer to creator. You know, that's great in terms of echoing what we wanted people to say. So that's positive. Um, I think the more interesting thing that wasn't a direct kind of result of, of people picking up our message is people starting to see WebMaker and Thimble and Popcorn as a legitimate Mozilla offering uh, beside everything else. And so you know, th this is a TechCrunch article where Thimble is mentioned beside Bootjagecko and Firefox Mobile. And that's the message we want to get out. It's something I'm working with Mitchell and Gary on uh, very directly is sort of how we kind of align our messaging to say these are all a part of Mozilla's broader strategy. Um, and we're already seeing the press uh, pick some of that out. And if you just look at the stats, um, you know, the last time we did a major media push on what we were doing was around the Mozilla Festival. We got more coverage in a, in a shorter period of time over uh, a WebMaker than we did uh, at the Mozilla Festival, so that shows some traction. I think the one thing, if we look at the coverage piece that is weak, is our call to action is not getting through. And it relates back to the contributor pieces. We don't have a clear, like, oh, you're excited about WebMaker? Like, here's how you can get involved no matter who you are. Um, and so that's a big thing for us to be working on in the next few months is how do we get that call to action out through the media, through bloggers, and so on. Uh, and then the other piece is just the idea that WebMaker is a big tent and not just Mozilla, maybe not getting reflected in the press, which is another thing to work on. So the, the thing that Matt and Ryan and others uh, and Barbara have uh, agreed to do is build a, do a, a UK-focused press campaign over the next four months. Um, and so that will build up to Mozilla Festival, but it will be broadly focused on WebMaker. Uh, and uh, you know, some of the advantages there is we've got staff on the ground, we've got programs on the ground, we have partners, um, and we have Mozilla has a press agency um, that we work with in the UK market. So that will be a place where we can test getting better at that call to action piece. And the last piece on metrics before I, I stop again for questions uh, is uh, revenue. And revenue for us is three areas, but um, the primary ones are grants and individual donations. Uh, we also, well, I guess four areas, we also get revenue from just our investments. We've got about $25 million in the bank and the foundation, and so some of our operating money just comes from interest on those investments. Uh, and then some money from Firefox uh, comes to us in the form of a, a dividend uh, from the Zillow Corporation to pay to go towards WebMaker. And so that's about $2.5 million this year. But the two that we look at really are individual donations and grants because they indicate whether there's a public that is interested in what we're doing, especially as we message WebMaker more as a part of, um, of our fundraising strategy, and also partner confidence. Are there other organizations like foundations who think we're doing good work and are willing to put money behind us? Um, and so on the revenue piece, we had a good Q1, but a weak Q2. Uh, and so if you look at the, this chart, you can see how we really spiked up and, and uh, kind of had some momentum in the beginning of the year. Probably 
um, still floating a little bit on the, the SOPA momentum, which helped us with fundraising. But the more important thing is, you know, Ben uh, and all of our campaign resources really focused on getting people out for summer code party and not as much on fundraising in the second, ha second quarter of the year. So I think that's fine. We're going back and people have probably already seen this as they see messages coming from uh, people pretending, or robots pretending to be me and Ben, uh, that, uh, that we're kind of back in fundraising mode. And I think we have confidence that we'll hit the targets we've got for ourselves, which I think are about 600,000 this year um, by the time we get to the end of the year. And I think more importantly, you know, you can see we're well above where we were in any previous year and have started to build a, just the capacity to do that sort of fundraising and the supporter base to do that kind of fundraising. Um, and so, yeah, as I said, Q3 returns to individual appeals and t-shirt promotions uh, and a new monthly donation campaign. That's what Ben and Ryan and, and others are working on right now. Uh, and then grants continue to be our strong suit and we're very happy to have Angela uh, have joined us to help us manage that strong suit. Um, we're projecting about 4.7 million, um, which is about a million and a half over what we originally budgeted to come in for grants, and there's still up to 5 million more in the pipeline. We won't get all of that, but you know, there's more promise beyond that, 4.7 million. Um, so that's good. Um, and you can kind of see a, an overview of that in the graph on the next slide, which is pretty, but basically says the same thing I just said. Um, the, the thing that a bunch of us are talking about, and I'm talking about the board, is it, it is risky for an organization, especially an organization that really has its own idea of what it wants to do in the world, to become too dependent on grants. They're not money that comes without conditions. They're money that comes actually with a lot of conditions of, we agreed with that other organization, we're going to do this, this, and this. Uh, and as we evolve and uh, kind of refine our strategy, you can kind of get um, you know, get a little bit locked in. And so the mix of revenue, which right now has become quite heavily towards grants, like it's about 40%, 45% of our revenue this year, or well, 45% of our spend this year, um, which is about nine and a half million dollars, and so four and a half million of it is, is grant money. Um, that is, uh, you know, we want to talk about that mix of revenue and sustainability at our next board meeting. And if people have thoughts on that or want to contribute to that conversation, I'm, I'm happy to talk to people. Or Jeffrey is the other person who's, who's helping with that conversation. And my guess is we'll want to move a little bit more towards what are in the grant world called major gifts, which is individuals making contributions, like a person who gives money to, you know, gets their name on a building at a university, as opposed to just foundations, which we love working with, but I think we want to also manage the amount of our revenue that comes from, from that kind of a source. So that, that's the other four metrics, uh, revenue, uh, press, badges, and adoption. Um, Michelle, are there questions that we want to dive into on any of that? Um, there are lots of good questions on the Etherpad, actually. Um, that's what happens. I can just keep talking. <laughs> All these good things cropping up. Um, unless you have more slides, it might make sense if you wanted to. I, I can also read some of them aloud, um, but there might be. Well, why don't some I just Why don't I just quickly go through the the summary slides because there are a couple more, cool. um, and I realize we're near the end. And then you can tee up the best ones and read them aloud. So, just to quickly summarize, you know, we've shipped WebMaker, which is huge. Congratulations, to everybody here around the room and on the phone. Uh, we're now in this testing and iterating mode, and I think, you know, I see people heads down on that. There's some decisions to make on resources and focus, but I think that's moving. Uh, and we're also into the conversation about building a stronger base of, of contributors, although that needs more conversation. Um, the challenges are getting good at that community and contributor piece, keeping those um, product and learning feedback loops going, and then just scoping and making trade-offs in what we ship, which I think we've actually gotten you know, okay at uh, over the last six months, but is always a tough thing to do and something we need to get better at in the sh next short uh, period of time. And then the last uh, slide, I think, is you know, we're starting to think about next year, and so how do we move into quote-unquote real programming on top of 
symbol or something else? Uh, how do we connect uh, mobile and games into what we're doing with web making? Which I think we'll start to do some experimenting on, and there'll be a theme at MozFest around that. Uh, and how do we build strength in new geographies outside of North America? I think we want to be global, although we have uh, you know strength in the UK already built, and there's some significant opportunities um, tied to Boot to Gecko uh, in Brazil and other parts of South America in 2013. So those are things that we're, we're thinking about. So Michelle, that is the end of the slides. All right. Um, cool. So um, I'm just picking up from the Etherpad some of the good highlight questions. Um, I like this one was, um, what are the partners saying about working with us? Um, are we collecting feedback? For example, Code or Dojo. How are they liking and building on our tools into their programs? That's a, that's a good question because we've focused on uh, going to individual instructors mostly in this round of feedback, and I think we're still gathering that feedback. So I think probably you or, or Ben, uh, Michelle, could you know, update people in a few weeks on what we've heard back from individual, instruct individual instructors. I don't think we've systematically gone back to the partners, and so that's a a really good idea um, to make that an additional cut. I mean, we'll get some of those people through the first piece. I think informally, um, we've had good feedback from the people we've heard from, or at least that I have. Um, I was talking to Alistair uh, from the London Zoo um, recently, and they're kind of taking what they started with Thimble and, and taking it further. Um, so there's some traction there. But I, I don't think we're being systematic about it, and it's probably good to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a question about um, localization. So do we have a plan to address localization in our main offering? For example, the Chinese, the Japanese uh, symbol, can we encourage more localization, set up a process for people to follow? Yes, but we don't, don't have a plan. So we, we have a commitment to do it. What we don't know, what we haven't done is broken down what things we can do first and do systematically. And so I think there's lots of opportunity for people to uh, start thinking about doing Thimble projects uh, in their own language inside of the English interface, or for people who've got the technical capabilities to go as far ahead as the, the Mozilla Japan people did um, and kind of just um, run ahead on their own. But what we actually need is a, a infrastructure and a plan for localization, which um, we're just in the process of figuring out who can lead that. So there's a commitment there. But um, if for anybody who's been involved in Mozilla for a long time uh, and watched kind of localization evolve, it's something you need to, to really um, be systematic about and, and thoughtful about so that it actually works well for people. So we're, we're in that early processes of that. And if there are people who want to help on the systems design piece or have a, like, opinions about how it works as opposed to people who want to just help localize, um, you know, put up your hand or, or let me or Michelle know and, and we can connect you into the people who will be driving that once we figure it out. Um, all right, maybe two more questions? But actually, one, one thing I would just say that sets some realistic um, expectations on that is I, I think it will, my guess, although the planning will, um, you know, determine this, is that, you know, it's still, minimum three to six months out, and probably more six and beyond before we have really good uh, systematic localization. And, and, I'm, and I'm making that up, so it could be even longer. Cool. Um, so there's a, com there's a, a question here from Peter about, um, like, are we having a sort of repository or center where we're collecting like, best practices from community building and engagement? Um, where are they being stored and communicated? Um, and what are the next steps uh, in that realm? Yeah, so the answer is no. Uh, we haven't got that yet. Um, it's a good idea. And we're just in the process of kind of figuring out uh, who's really on point for that. So when I talked about uh, hiring next year some dedicated contributor engagement staff, um, that will be the sort of thing that those people will be responsible for. Um, in the meantime, I think we've got three or four people that we're going to ask 
take some interim responsibility for that, so that's a good idea to put in that um, pipeline. Um, and then a uh, last question from Sayak about how we'll conclude the summer code party. Michelle or Ben Simon, <laughs> how will we conclude the summer code party? Um, I mean, I, I can say that we're going to September 23rd, and that weekend uh, we um, that weekend we want to do a bunch of other events. But I know that Michelle and Ben, you guys have a specific plan. Michelle, yeah. do you want to take it, or do you want me to? You can jump in. We can have a new voice. All right. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So the idea is basically the, the final weekend, which, are, which we set as September 22nd and 23rd, which is almost exactly three months after we um, began to try and get people, figure out ways for people to convene and sort of share out what they did, um, and then also think about um, you know what 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 they'll do next. Uh, so what, what that will look like is um, a few big events. Um, we're hoping to do events at some of our mod spaces, which are sort of places where Mozilla community members can, can come together in cities where we have large presences, so you know, San Francisco, uh, Vancouver, London, Toronto, um, as well as some of the other places where we have some space, um, and bring people together, figure out a sort of grander report back Mechanism, so probably some sort of, you know, video or something like that that we put together that puts that shows a lot of what happened this summer, um, and then figure out ways to facilitate people sharing um, what they made this summer with everyone else in the room. Um, so it should be just sort of a fun, uh, a fun way to um, to show and tell, basically. Uh, and then there, that will also be something that can be done at a very low. Um, Low level is the wrong word, but at, at, at a sort of low impact way, uh, you know, five people could come to the living room as easily as you know as they could for any other um, type of event. And so, it's not something that require will require a large space or a large investment or anything like that. Um, but we'll try and have a few a few bigger ones for folks who, bigger ones for folks who are able to get to those, um, and then hopefully have it somewhat mimic the opening weekend of code, um, but just with a sort of more Provide some, a little bit of closure on the summer. Cool. You're getting a plus one from Sayek about the video. All right. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that that seems like the main questions that were uh, covered in here, Mark. Great. Well, thank you for all of you who actually had the patience to listen to me for that long. Uh, if it was me, I would be painful. Uh, but uh, you know, huge congratulations to everybody for an amazing first half of the, the year of web making. Uh, and there's a lot of progress to be proud of. And uh, the slides, as you can probably know, are already up on Rebecca's site. I'm going to try to do a blog posting before I go on vacation, um, summarizing some of these slides as well. And so certainly, if you, uh, you know, if your if your mom asks you what you're working on, or if you just want to be proud of what it is. I mean, I, I think there's a lot to be proud about that, that's well summarized in these slides. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of good and hard work all added up together. So thank you to everybody. And looking forward to how we dive into the next five months of it, six months of it. And thank you, Michelle, for hosting. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. All right. Bye, guys. Everyone. Thank you. Please stand by.